the best five teams of week five in college football, the team that put on the best performances in all of college football. Number one, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide, that 41 to 31 win over Georgia. Highly impressed, Jalen Milrow, everybody in between, uh, Ryan Williams, 17 year old. How many times are they gonna tell us that this kid is 17 years old? We already know. It's like last year when the Oregon Ducks would play, and it'd be Bo Nix and Taz. Oh, his adopted brother, his brother. Just so they could tell the story over and over and over and over again. We know. <laughs> we know already. Oh, uh, but Alabama. Uh, the second team up, Colorado. They went to UCF. Everybody writing them off. They are 12-point underdogs. Went in there 48 to 21. A decisive victory. And the problem is. I didn't hear enough people giving Colorado credit because every time that something comes out about Colorado that ain't cool, whether it was a uniform, potential mix up or or stories coming out, any of it, do you know what ends up happening? Hmm. Oh, when uh, they do something great, people are real quiet. Look at the kid, Cor Cormani McClain. Oh, people criticize Dion, and I did too. I didn't like the way he handled it, his sons and the way they came at the kid. Just just let him go on about his way. I didn't like the way they handled it, but they've been proven right at this so far. And now I hope Cormani McClain is able to recover from everything, but they've been proven right in that situation. So I'm going to sing Colorado's praises loud because when they do something wrong, we criticize real, real loud. All right, the third team is Penn State, 21 to seven over Illinois. And I kind of lowered my energy about it because I still don't love this Penn State team, but this was a hell of a win. I still have questions about the quarterback, Drew Aller, but they were able to, to uh, put Illinois in a headlock and give them a noogie, just old school noogie. They just didn't let them do anything. And Illinois had a chance before halftime to put up some points. They got stuffed. So this Penn State defense showing up again. And in the second halves, they have been absolutely dominant. They haven't even allowed, I think, over 100 yards in any of their games in the second half. That's the mark of a good team. Because one thing that people don't always understand about how football games work is teams have an entire game week to game plan for you or longer depending on whether bye weeks and all this stuff and the offensive coordinators and the defensive coordinators have scripts and they have plays that or line up in formations or do things that you haven't really seen on film and then at some point in time all those plays are over with and then the defensive coordinator offensive coordinator have seen what the other coordinator is going to bring at them and then they're like oh okay it's time to adjust and that's why you see big swings, particularly in college football, at the halftime because the adjustments are being made. All right, uh, next team up, Kentucky. Yo, 20 to 17 win over Ole Miss. Yo, Kentucky. Uh, Mark Stoops, you learned your lesson from that Georgia game when you punted the ball on their side of the territory with three minutes left, you learned. This time you went forward on fourth down. And what, what happens? Fortune favors the aggressive in college football. Huge win for Kentucky. But I'm going to tell you this. People, I knew that the world was going to overreact to this because I was like, oh, man, Kentucky's going to end up ranked. I will say a bravo to the committee, uh, to the AP voters for not putting three and two Kentucky in the top 25 because of this win, because they didn't deserve it after they got shellacked by South Carolina as well. So, you know, but huge win, big win. But now let's talk about Ole Miss fraudsters, buddy. And it's not that this Ole Miss team is not good, but their preseason had everybody fooled. Oh, Jackson, Dart, Heisman, Toby, look what he's doing so far. Not that, not that any of the players or the team are bad. It's just that you get a false sense of reality when you're not playing competitive games in non-conference. 
and people say, oh, yes, yeah, so look at this team. They scored 70. They scored 60. We saw it with Mississippi State in the beginning of the season. They beat somebody by like 50, 60 points in week one, and they've been getting their head kicked in since. They even lost to Florida. That's three out. And the last team up, my Oregon Ducks. 34 to 13 win over UCLA. Jumped out to a huge start. Great start. In the second half, didn't necessarily love it in the second half, but this defense dominated. The defense only gave up six points. Knocked the quarterback out toward the end of the game. Barely allowed rushing yards. I, I was very impressed with this team, particularly on defense. And then in the second half, it looked like they just wanted to get home healthy. They were like, um, in soccer, the term would be using parking the bus. Oregon parked the bus. And now we got to talk about the worst of the week. The worst college football performances of the week. Number one, UCF. UCF was a 12 point favorite and you're supposed and the number one rushing team in the country and you couldn't run over Colorado. Mm -mm -mm. That ain't it. But good job, Colorado. Uh, the second team, the Kansas Jayhawks. Oh, they might be one of the biggest disappointments in all the college football this year. They came in ranked in the top 25. They just took another loss, a 38 to 27 loss to TCU. This is not supposed to be like this, Kansas. We were we, we were supposed to be celebrating you staying in the top 25. And so they got some rebuilding to do. They lost their offensive coordinator last year, and it looks like they've lost their identity on offense, and they got to figure it out because this is not the Jaden Daniels, the Jalen Daniels that we're used to seeing. This is not the offense we're used to seeing anything out of this Kansas team. So uh, they got to get it together. Uh, the third team, and this is not in order of worstness, <laughs> but just worst in general, uh, is Ole Miss. You lost to Kentucky at home. What happened to all the points? It's 20 to 17. You lost. What happened to all the points, Ole Miss? Well, Kentucky's a tough team. It's that SEC gauntlet. Really? South Carolina knocked their doors off. You're supposed to be a national championship contender. And you might still be, but this might be the wake-up call that Ole Miss needed because their non-conference schedule was has been Furman, Middle Tennessee State, Wake Forest, and Georgia Southern before this. And they're not alone in this because Ohio State, same way. But this was not a good performance in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And if you want, and if they want Jackson Dart to win the Heisman Trophy, they're going to have to put up big time scores, big time stats, everything when it matters the most. All right, uh, next team up Illinois. I believed in you. Oh, against Penn State. But you did cover the spread. So thanks for that. Um, Penn State 21, Illinois 7. Illinois couldn't score. They just couldn't. And I, I do like the fact that uh, Luke Altmaier, who had his worst game of the year last year in this game, that he didn't repeat the same type of performance. Uh, he was 16 for 25, 185, touchdown and an interception. And they and this Illinois defense held Drew Aller down. 15 for 21, 135. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But Illinois, offensively, we got to get a little bit better. Now, on one hand, I'm proud of them because Illinois is moving in the right direction. But on the other hand, yeah, this, this, this was a game that Illinois, if they wanted to potentially make the college football playoff, that this was a game that they needed to win. Um, And the last team up, Florida State. I know we, at this point in time, you know what? Actually, I'm not, I'm, no, no, I'm not going to promise that. I was going to say that Florida State will never put them back on the worst of the week again this year, but this game was absolutely atrocious. How they lost they lost 42 to 16. Florida State lost 42 to 16 to SMU. Now SMU has been good since they went to uh Kevin Jennings as their quarterback uh, permanently. He had 254 and three touchdowns, but this Florida State 
defense and offense are, if this ain't rock bottom, I don't know what is. DJ Uyangalele had his worst performance of the, of the year, 12 for 30, 222, two touchdowns, three interceptions. It was bad, man. I, honestly, it was really bad. And he fumbled too. It, he didn't, they, they didn't lose the fumble, but Lord have mercy. It was, it was, it was just a god awful performance. And Mike Norvell, he has to get something to right this ship. Something. Like, give a sign of life. And they did put Brock Glenn in at the end of the game. The uh, freshman, he went 0 for 4. But obviously, that's that's not anything at that point in time. But I would be willing to bet that we see him start next week to at least get some something going. Because they got four losses already. They're one at four. And they are not going to be headed to a bowl game at this point in time. And in fact, it's going to be hard to find four or five wins on this roster.